Yo, what is up guys? What is going on? So today I thought I'd make a really quick update video talking about the R6 since I've had it now for just over six months. I think I'm coming up on about seven months of owning this camera. And I know a lot of people out there, they like to hear sort of someone's opinion after they've used the camera for quite some time. So I wanted to do that today, but I wanted to do a little bit differently and ask you guys questions. So I want to answer whatever questions you guys have as an owner of the R6 for now about six months. But before we do that, I'm going to roll some of my favorite photos that I've taken on this camera since I've owned it. So I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so we're gonna jump into the first few questions and I apologize if I pronounce anyone's name wrong throughout this video, but JP Tugan asks, what are some features you like about the R6 over the previous R? And Just Illy asks, I have an EOS R, I'm thinking to upgrade to the R6, is it worth making the switch? I would say if you have the means to upgrade from the R to the R6, I think it's definitely worth it. So I think there's probably three main reasons that you would switch. The first being dual card slots. It's a really good idea to have two card slots if you're shooting anything sensitive like a wedding so you have an instant backup of your photos. Definitely the second one is the dual pixel autofocus 2. It has greatly improved on the R6 over the R to the point where I barely ever miss focus now with my R6. The third one is increased customizability. It's definitely improved on the R6. It's really important to me that I can shoot quickly and reliably and you could customize the R very well but the R6 I think it just takes it to that next level. You can assign way more buttons to more functions and that's super helpful. Some honorable mentions would be the inclusion of IBIS even though I don't use it as much for video shooting it is really nice to have it for stills. Also uncropped 4k is a big draw card as well that 1.7 times crop on the R really did kill it as a video camera and also the 4K at 60p, being able to take that really high resolution detailed footage and slow it down, it creates some really beautiful cinematic footage which I love. Ben.axiac.film asks, can the R6 shoot 120 frames per second without slowing the footage down if you know what I mean? So I think what he's referring to here is the ability to record sound and interpolate the footage at 100 frames or 120 frames later in the computer. Unfortunately, no you can't do that. The R6 does interpolate the footage in camera and it doesn't record any audio. Shirt Ugol asks, would you use the R6 as an A cam for say a short run and gun documentary? And I have to say yes, it is a very capable camera with a really, really nice image. You can rig it out to make it a little bit more flexible. The only really important thing to me that you'd be missing out on is maybe an XLR input. So if you have like a boom operator for your shoot, then, you know, obviously the R6 doesn't really offer that. So you'd be looking at more of an external uh, audio recording solution. Monish Rohira asks, how is the screen brightness in bright sunlight? To be honest, I've never really had an issue with the screen not being bright enough for me. For the most part, it works really well. Big Daddy Dream asks, do you see yourself getting a different camera body? At the moment, not really. The R6 does pretty much everything I need out of a camera. Doi.55 asks, is it a good heater? Um, yes, it is a good heater. <laughs> Wow, so North Borders has asked me a question. I've been looking up to this guy for ages, so it is really an honor to answer a question from you, Mike. Um, he asks, how come every photo you take with a Canon camera is shit? Um, or he must mean um, is the shit. Um, yeah, how come every photo you take with a Canon camera is the shit? Um, thanks, man. Yeah, um, it's a really good camera. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. BL on Streets asks, why R6, not R5? Uh, for me, it just comes down to the price. The R6 is a lot cheaper than the R5. The R5 does add some really exciting functionality to it. Obviously having 45 megapixels. I recently actually did a video comparing the R6 to the R5. So I'll leave it in a card in the top right hand corner if you wanna watch that. And also the 8K video and 4K at 120 frames per second would be awesome to have, but I do have a Red Raven as well that I use from time to time. It can shoot 4K at 120 frames per second. It is nice to have. However, it's not something that I shoot with quite a lot. So I just couldn't really justify the expense of the R5, knowing that I'd probably only use those features from time to time. So a few questions along the same vein. The first one is from Soy Raka. What's your favorite feature of the R6 so far? 
Crooked Grinds asks, what's your worst experience with it? And it's Mo. 298 asks some of the cons of the R6. So pros and cons of the R6, I have to say pros, the dual pixel autofocus is definitely a pro. Uh, dual card slots for sure is also very helpful. The 20 megapixel sensor as well as the ability to shoot C-RAW for me is a big pro. I know that for a lot of people they want to have more megapixels which is totally fine but for me it just saves me on data costs like I just don't fill my hard drives and my SD cards up as fast as I would with a higher megapixel sensor that can't shoot compressed RAW. Definitely the video quality and the picture profile. So I love the C-Log, definitely it is a big plus of this camera, but the standard picture profiles of Rec. 709 picture profiles just look so good straight out of camera. And I think that's a big pro for me when shooting videos. Last on the pros list for me, and I've touched on this earlier in the video, is the customizability of the camera. The buttons and the dials can be assigned to so many different functions. So that's another thing that I really, really like. So now the cons list, and it's not huge, but there are definitely some things that I think could be improved on this camera. Um, the first one, I think that the 1080p uh, 120 frames per second could have a bit less moire and aliasing uh, because I think it is line skipped and down sampled and whatnot. Um, it's just not as crisp and there isn't as much detail. And when you dig in and zoom in on the file, it doesn't look as good as the 1080, especially the crop 1080 and the 4K mode. Obviously the overheating, I don't really have to say much about this. It's been talked about to death, but yeah. I mean, if this camera didn't overheat, I would be much less stressed. But knowing that it has that limitation on it and knowing that, you know, if you are shooting for extended periods of time, like right now, I'm at 13 minutes. Um, and I am shooting in 4K, 25p with the light codec. So as long as you're sort of thinking about that and you're keeping that in mind, you should be fine. Okay, so the last con, and this is something that's kind of been pissing me off for the last couple of months, but um, ever since I started shooting a little bit more on a gimbal, I wish there was a custom button for turning on and off the eye sensor. With a custom button, you can switch it to toggle between the viewfinder and the LCD screen, but there's no way to toggle it between eye sensor and LCD screen. So I really wish that was a feature because I like being able to use the eye sensor and then chuck it on a gimbal, switch over to screen only mode. So I don't know if there's a way to do that. I'm, I've looked through the menus. I can't find it. If you guys know if there's a way to do that, please let me know down in the comment section. Okay, so the Billy Wheeler asks, is the 20 megapixel sensor enough? And C for Photo also asks, are you missing 30 megapixels from the EOS R? So I've already made a video about this addressing whether I think that the 20 megapixel sensor is enough. So if you wanna watch that, I'll leave a link down in the description below. So Lex Get Raw, I think that's how you say it asks how hard are the photo and video files to edit? So the photo files are really easy to edit. Um, pretty much my computer just breezes through them. And because I have the new M1 MacBook Pro, the H.265 files, the log files coming out of this camera are really easy to edit. They just edit natively, uh, plays back really smoothly. So if you are in the market to get a new computer and you are shooting on the R5 or the R6 and you're dealing with this codec, I would actually recommend upgrading to this computer. Um, however, it is pretty easy to just transcode all of your files to ProRes or H.264 before you get stuck in. So I would definitely recommend doing that if you're working with a PC that doesn't have compatibility or an older MacBook. Robert Flynn asks, is there a significant difference in image quality comparison with the RP? I would say not really. There is a slight difference between the two. I would say that the main thing is that the RP does kind of struggle in shadow recovery. So if you're shooting underexposed, the R6 is definitely the winner here. Keone asks, looking back, would you have bought this camera over what's on the market now? I think definitely yes. There isn't much else on the market that is enticing me at the moment. The R6 seems like the perfect all round camera for me. Johnpon.io asks, how quiet is the electronic shutter and can you make it truly silent? It is very, very quiet. The electronic first curtain shutter is quiet as it is. And when I first tested this camera out, I made a note of the fact that the model that I was shooting couldn't really hear the shutter. Whereas on the other cameras, they could sort of know when I was taking a photo and know when to change poses. And yes, you can make the camera completely silent. Artichar photography underscore AP asks, does it overheat? in 4K if used long time? Uh, the answer is yes. Ruby Lin asks, have your settings changed? If so, why? 
There is actually only one thing that I've changed since I made that video sharing with you guys my settings for the R6, and that is that I no longer shoot in electronic first curtain shutter, I use the fully mechanical shutter. I watched a video not too long ago that was kind of uh, showing the differences between the two, and I didn't notice this, but actually the bokeh looks a little bit weird when you use the electronic first curtain shutter. I think it does have some impact on the overall life of the shutter, so it's totally up to you, but I've switched over to using the mechanical shutter now. So that wraps up the video, I wanna thank you guys once again for leaving all your questions over on the Instagram. If you want to be part of more videos like this, make sure you go over there and follow me. And if you have more questions, leave them down in the comment section below. I'll definitely try to help you guys out there. So I'll see you guys in the next one.